I send up to Scotland with Ronnie Cowan. Ronnie Cowan. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Prime Minister, were you as dismayed as I was by the number of drug-related deaths reported in Scotland yesterday? Because if you were, then you can do something about it. Not just in Scotland, but across the United Kingdom, obstacles exist to the creation of drug consumption rooms. And those obstacles can be removed... Oh, 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 one second. Just to say, I'm not responsible. You keep saying you, and honestly, I don't want to be responsible for any of this. Okay. <laughs> my apologies, Mr. Speaker. I'm obviously addressing my question to the Prime Minister. So, the Prime Minister, the obstacles that exist across the United Kingdom to the creation of drug consumption rooms, and those obstacles can be removed at Westminster. Previously, the UK government has held an ideological view that drug consumption rooms encourage drug taking. Will the Prime Minister engage with me and allow me the opportunity to help the Prime Minister do a good thing? Minister. Well, uh, Mr Speaker, the, uh, I listened very carefully to what the Honourable Gentleman had to say. Uh, I, I, may, I must say that we don't want to do anything that, that would encourage the consumption uh, of more drugs, Mr Speaker, nor do we want to decriminalise the possession or, uh, of, of, of drugs, because I believe that they ruin lives and drive criminality across this whole United Kingdom. But uh, I'm more than happy to look at the proposals uh, that he makes uh, one more time and indeed uh, to pursue uh, the, the, uh, the agenda of, of tackling drugs. But I may say that the majority of powers uh, that are needed, the, the vast panoply of powers that are needed uh, to tackle drugs and drugs crime are already vested uh, with the uh, devolved administration in Scotland, and I'm afraid the failures that he talks about are very largely down to them. Drug laws are reserved to Westminster. The Scottish Government are calling for an overhaul, or for these powers to be devolved to Holyrood. The Home Office insists it will continue to work with the Scottish Government to tackle drug misuse and harm. But decriminalisation doesn't feature as part of their plans. David Wallace Lockhart, Report in Scotland. Good evening. The Scottish Conservatives' public health spokesperson has told BBC Scotland she's willing to consider the decriminalisation of drugs. Annie Wells also said she'd look at the introduction of consumption rooms where users can take drugs in a safe environment. The Glasgow MSP's comments come as she calls on Boris Johnson to make Scottish drug deaths his top priority. Here's our political reporter, David Wallace Lockhart. Scottish Conservatives' public health spokesperson is calling on Boris Johnson to make Scottish drug deaths his top priority. And she wants both the Scottish and UK governments to attend a summit to discuss the issue. And she's willing to consider radical options, including decriminalisation. I think we need to look at the evidence here. We do have to take a, a full evidence-based approach. And I'm, I'm open to, to listen to what these um, issues and concerns can be. So would you consider radical proposals treatment rooms where people can take drugs, decriminalisation of drugs? Again, we do, we, do need to be, we do need to look radically at this and I will be open to whatever comes my way and I will look at it all as an evidence-based approach. If that seems to be the right way, then that is something that we will have to look at in greater detail and urge the, the Scottish Government and UK Government to do, do the same. Tommy Shepherd. Mr Speaker, in the twilight of the last Parliament, both the Scottish Affairs and Health Select Committees produced reports on the drugs crisis. Both reports drew on international evidence and recommended a change in the law to allow vulnerable addicts to be able to consume substances in secure facilities under medical supervision. Now, I know this is a complex and, uh, and controversial area, and I'm not expecting the Prime Minister to make policy in the hoof. But I want to ask him, will he consider on a pilot basis the establishment of overdose prevention centres in order to gather evidence as to whether this could help prevent deaths in this country as it has in other countries? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful to the Honourable Member because he's raising a very important issue and a difficult problem. And the, the question is, how do you uh, introduce, as it were, consumption rooms without encouraging consumption. That's the, the challenge that we face. As he knows, we are having a drugs summit uh, in, this year. Uh, it will be held in, in Scotland and uh, we will be announcing a date shortly. Deanna Davidson. A lot of people think that if you give someone a needle, 
that they're automatically just going to use more and we know that's not true. People are going to use drugs whether they have clean equipment or they don't. My brother died of AIDS related kidney failure and he got it from sharing needles and not having a place like Insight to go and do it cleanly. Because people get high, they don't care, right? And that's, that's what happened, right? And in those 11 years, those figures have got worse and worse and worse. I, I think, and I, I'm not trying to do dodge the responsibility here, but I think when you're talking about drug deaths, it is not simply a case of issues within that period of time. Some of those issues go back a long way, but what I'm trying to set out here are the various actions that we're taking. We're also uh, back in Glasgow City Council just now uh, that wants to create a safer consumption facility here in Glasgow to try to uh, deal with some of the issues uh, of people who take drugs while we're trying to support them off of drugs. That's something we don't have the power to do right now, but we're trying to put pressure on uh, Westminster to give the go-ahead to Glasgow City Council and, and to do that. And the families who've been shattered by this crisis, do you apologise to the mothers and fathers and aunts no, and uncles? I, I would say sorry to any family who loses somebody uh, from drug use, from alcohol misuse, from uh, suicide, fr from of, of course, as, as a human being, let alone a politician, my heart goes out to families in those circumstances. My responsibility as, as First Minister is to make sure we have the policies in place, the investments in place, the approaches in place to try to reduce this. These are, as I know, you know, these are horrendously complex issues. Uh, some of the the issues that lead people into drugs are extremely complex and the solutions need to be complex as a result. One of the uh, things we're doing uh, right now, partly in the city, but more broadly, is around uh, a different approach to how we tackle homelessness for people who have complex needs, including drug use, using the housing first approach, for example, to get people into settled accommodation to make it not easier, but to make it more effective then to put the right support around people to allow them to deal with their underlying issues. So, you know, these are issues that, while I readily accept the government I lead's responsibility, I think these are issues that sometimes defy simple political, party political uh, analysis. These are complex issues and we have a range of complex solutions that we're taking forward to try to get on top of them. And I notice you don't blame Westminster. I'm not blaming anybody uh, for this. This is our responsibility. The one issue uh, which I mentioned a moment ago, which is not about blaming Westminster, it's a statement of fact, is that much of the legislation around drug misuse is reserved to Westminster. So when, as is the case now, Glasgow City Council want to look at this safer consumption facility, we don't have the power in Scotland to do that. So we do need to look to Westminster there. Uh, blocking that at the moment, but hopefully we can persuade them to give us the power we need to try something more innovative that other countries would suggest uh, has success. Will the First Minister put politics aside and back the cross-party calls for 15.4 million to residential rehab? Um, the draft budget that was published a few weeks ago uh, included an increase in uh, funding for reducing harm uh, harms related to drugs, uh, increased funding of 12.7 million. Uh, I can confirm today that the Finance Secretary will confirm this afternoon that we intend to go further than that. Instead of an additional 12.7 million, there will be an additional 20 million pounds of funding from health uh, dedicated to reducing harms from drugs. Uh, and that will, support, that will support the recommendations that the task force uh, brings forward. So we are very, very serious about uh, this and we are serious in working with anybody and everybody to tackle uh, what is uh, a public health emergency. Uh, but on the issue of UK government action, uh, we absolutely recognise the responsibility in us and the range of actions that we are taking, the funding uh, we are dedicating to this uh, shows that. But it is the case that there was a lot of consensus yesterday uh, that law changes are needed as well, uh, including around a safe consumption room, um, and that does lie with the UK government. So I absolutely take my responsibility. I just wish we had uh, a similar approach from the UK government so that we could genuinely put party politics aside on this and work together in the interests of those who need us to do exactly that. And that's our...
While we have been on air, the First Minister has been making a statement updating the Parliament on drugs policy. The country's drug death rate uh, is the highest in Europe, having struck a record high of 1,264 deaths recorded last year, double the number that died in the previous year. Nicola Sturgeon took over as, since Nicola Sturgeon took over as First Minister, sorry, in December she replaced the drugs minister and promised to get more personally involved in tackling the problem. Problem. And she has now announced new measures at Holyrood. Our social affairs correspondent Chris Clements joins us now to tell us about them. Uh, Chris, we'll get on to what's been announced in just a second, but the Scottish Government's been under real pressure on this issue. Uh, this issue, ha this problem has been a long time in the making, though, hasn't it? It's, it's been decades in the making. It's uh, For the last six years, Scotland's recorded uh, its highest ever drug death totals. And actually, you mentioned the, the highest rate in Europe there. It's actually three times, uh, three and a half times the death rate of that of the rest of the UK. So you kind of get an idea how, diff how different and how badly Scotland is faring within the same legislative framework when it comes to dealing with problem drug use. Now, when the figures came out for 2018, a year and a half ago, there was this uh, sh general shock about the fact that it had breached the 1,000 mark for the first time. And the then Public Health Minister, Joe Fitzpatrick, set up this drug death task force, whose job it was to really examine services across Scotland and see how they were working. And they identified a few problems in terms of choice and access to services, uh, you know, the, the number of people in services, it was only sitting at 40% of estimated uh, problem drug users were in services. Um, so that became a real issue. But when the figures came out in December, there was, um, there was even more of a reaction, and that then led to Joe Fitzpatrick's resignation. Um, and since then, as you've pointed out, the First Minister has stepped in. She's led the latest, uh, the latest meeting of the Drug Death Task Force, and today she's announcing measures that will help uh, those across this sector and those who are currently suffering from addiction. Just run through for us then, Chris, the, the, the main measures that have been announced by the government today. Well, first of all, she, she announced a package of £250 million over the next five financial years. Now, that's going to be used to expand re residential rehab. Uh, £20 million a year of that will be used to ex expand residential re rehab. She also said there will be a, an additional £5 million to be available until the end of March to expand the number of rehab beds in the area. But one of the bigger things that she's talking about is, is the expansion of medical assisted treatment standards. So really that is giving people a uniform uh, experience of addiction services across the country. Um, now that, that includes things like same day prescribing, that includes access to services on the same day that they approach them. And because some of the information that we're getting from the Drug Death Task Force was shown that people's experience of it was varying across different parts of the country. One of the things that she said that they are still examining and they haven't come to a final decision on it yet is the introduction of a safer consumption facility. Now these are places where people can go to inject drugs, drugs under supervision and they can also have access to, uh, to wraparound services as well. Now she says that there are legal barriers to that. Um, obviously we have said in the past at the Home Office who control the Misuse of Drugs Act they are against this type of proposal. So they're still looking at how they're going to get around uh, the, the legal barriers to that. But she did say that another um, another uh, initiative that's been trialled in Glasgow already, heroin-assisted treatment, that is going to be expanded across different parts of Scotland. And Chris, what's your sense of the what the reaction to these announcements is going to be among those who work in this sector? Well, sector-wise, I mean, there, there has been a, a huge uh, campaign um, being led by uh, groups like uh, Favour UK, that's Faces and Voices of Recovery. They have been asking for this £20 million uh, investment into residential rehab and, and to expand the number of places available. So I, I would imagine they would be um, they would be particularly pleased with this. In terms of the, on the other side of things, about the harm reduction model in terms of the safer consumption facility, the fact that the government haven't committed to that yet may be disappointing to some, but you know, th there, are, there is still movement there. Uh, the activist, Peter Kraiken, he's the, the, the chap who, who started his own, um, his own consumption facility in the back of a van out with the legal framework. Um, he has met with the First Minister, he's met with the new Drug Policy Minister, Angela Constance, and they do appear to be in discussions about this. And actually, he'd previously been charged with uh, an offence under the Misuse of Drugs Act for allegedly obstructing a police search. Today, there's also been an announcement that 
that those charges have been dropped as well. So you are seeing a slow crawl towards that. In terms of how people are reacting around the medical assisted treatment, we don't know yet. It's too, it's too early to say. But I guess over the course of the next few months, we'll begin to get an idea of how these services will change and how people are going to be able to interact with them. OK, Chris, thanks very much for that update. Well, joining me now is Austin Smith, who is Policy Officer at the Scottish Drugs Forum. Austin, uh, thanks for being with us. Just let's get your yeah. initial reaction to what you've been hearing from the First Minister today. Well, there'll be a huge welcome uh, for this announcement, not only in terms of the detail that's been uh, given today, uh, and of course, there'll be more of that coming uh, going forward, I'm sure. Uh, there, it's the tone of it. It's the, it's the notion that uh, politicians are listening, uh, that they actually have some insight and understand uh, the nature of the problem and the, the, the breadth of the response that's required. Uh, so there'll be, I, I would predict that there would be a, a broad welcome for this. Uh, which of the measures that have been announced do you think are going to be particularly effective? Talk us through exactly where this is going to make a difference. Well, it's important to understand the context here. here. We're talking about uh, the prevention of drug deaths and what all the evidence says is the most important thing that the state can supply is good quality treatment. And that treatment has to be accessible and acceptable to uh, the people who uh, have uh, a drug problem. I, I, and so it, it's not about which bit of it's most important. It's the fact that the spectrum of treatment would be in there and people would have the opportunity to, to engage in the treatment that, that they need. Um, so the, the, ease, the stuff around the, what are called the MAT standards, uh, particularly around the accessibility and being able to get uh, medication immediately or on the, on the day you present is absolutely crucial. Uh, and and uh, there will be a huge welcome for that. It's a huge challenge in delivering that, as in much of this. Uh, but the fact there's a focus and a determination to do it is, is very welcome. And the expansion of rehabilitation and rehab beds as well was something that the Scottish Government had been pressed on by opposition parties. Is that something that you think, in terms of what's been announced today, goes far enough in that area? Well, I, I'm sure. I mean, actually, we don't know uh, how much uh, residential rehab costs across the, the whole the whole budget. So, in terms of increase, it's hard to say. Uh, but it's a substantial investment, and so this will uh, greatly increase the number of people who are able to access that, that crucial treatment. Uh, what I would say is that at present, the baseline, if you like, as the first minister said, is 655 places uh, were provided in the last year. Those figures for. Um, so even if we double or treble that, um, it, it remains a, a small part of treatment. So to let you understand, presently there's very low uptake of treatment. We're, we're only at 40 percent of people in treatment, whereas in England, for instance, that figure's 60 percent. So to increase where we are uh, to, to English figures, we need to find 12 and a half thousand treatment uh, places today uh, to, to catch up with the rest of the UK. Um, so, so there's a huge uh, thing, uh, challenge in that, and uh, the, obviously the 655 residential uh, places or, or uh, people in residential services is a drop in the ocean, if you like, although it's obviously crucial to those individuals. It's, it's small, uh, and so scaling it up will be, will be difficult, uh, and, and even if it's scaled up greatly, it will remain a, a smaller part. Most of the treatment will be done in the community under, hopefully, uh, good quality services which uh, meet the World Health Organization's recommended treatments. Uh, Chris was mentioning there, ministers talking about examining the safer consumption facilities. Uh, there are difficulties around that, which he was outlining. Um, something like that, how much of a difference would that make? How big a factor is that in trying to bring these drug death numbers down? Well, the, the drug consumption as proposed in Glasgow, which is the most developed plan for one in Scotland, um, is actually a, a reaction to two problems. One is street, street injecting, people injecting in public, public places, uh, and the dangers associated with that for those individuals, and an HIV outbreak. And really, that's, that's what those are evidence to, to, to respond to. In t terms of deaths, the hope would be uh, that people would... Uh, be, be able to engage in, in, in other supports which might reduce their, their chance of death. So to impact on these figures, while well, it would be very important for those people in the city centre of Glasgow, to impact on these figures, we really need uh, drug consumption rooms 
in any area of Scotland and towns or cities, most likely, where there is that problem of public in injecting and a risk of bloodborne virus transmission. Okay, thank you very much for your thoughts today, Austin. Thanks oh, thank for being you. with us. Thanks. Well, time now.